starting to analyze biological evidences and um, what are different techniques that we are going to study in instrumentation, all right? Now, today we'll be starting with the first technique that is microscopy, all right? So uh, to start with microscopy, uh, we all know what microscope is. So going by its literary term, what uh, do you think, what is microscope? What do you mean by microscope? You can write it down uh, over here or else you can unmute yourself and uh, tell. What is What do you mean by microscope? Um, an instrument where uh, small measures could be analyzed or small evidences could be analyzed. All right, small evidences or small things can be analyzed, but uh, and uh, we get a hint from here. Uh, you see, microscope. Micro means small, and scope means to see, right? So to see the small objects or to see small things, uh, that particular thing is called microscope or microscopy, and the instrument which is used to see those smaller objects is known as a microscope. All right. Now, these objects, they can be uh, varying from a few millimeters to even, uh, you know, a few uh, micrometers, even nanometers also. All right. So these are certain instruments, uh, uh, you know, microscopy is that. All right. Just a second. All right, so uh, meanwhile it connects, uh, gets back. So we'll start with microscopy. So uh, microscope, it is an instrument which is well defined as an optical apparatus, which uses arrangement of lenses to yield a magnified image of smaller objects, all right? So in this particular apparatus, there is arrangement of several lenses or there might be a single lens. Uh, the handheld device, that is the uh, lens which you use, the detective lens, which is commonly called, the magnifying lens, which is there, it also serves as a microscope. So it can be a simple uh, lens, a single lens can be there or it can be the arrangement of lenses and uh, uh, the use of optics is there. That means vision is there and light. The uh, light, uh, with the help of light, we can see the objects and uh, the magnified objects can be viewed by uh, when the uh, light passes through an array arrangement of lenses, all right? So that is what microscope is. And to achieve this particular result, all right? So uh, we use stereo, micro, uh, stereo microscope, which is uh, the simplest microscope which uh, you can come across. The simple microscope is the handheld uh, lens which is there. Uh, apart from that, there is stereo microscope, all right? Just give me a second. Yeah, so 
uh, this particular microscope uh, which i'm talking about the stereo microscope it uses number of mechanisms that gather the light and transmit this light and uh, focus it onto a specific path so that a magnified image of uh, the object or the sample which is there it can be focused within a short distance all right so this particular discipline of examining the small things using such an instrument it is called microscopy and uh, microscopic means the undetectable uh, undetectable to the unaided eye or the naked eye uh, if it is not assisted by the microscope and there are numerous types of microscopes and optical microscope uh, there are numerous types of microscopes and uh, optical microscope it is uh, the most up to date and first manufactured microscope which utilizes the light to uh, image the sample or to produce the magnified image of the sample and the electron microscopes they are another category of microscopes which comprise of uh, you might have heard about sem and tem that is uh, sem stands for scanning electron microscope and tem for transmission electron microscope all right and uh, talking about the first microscope which was uh, designed the first optical microscope which was designed it was uh, technology uh, technologically advanced it was the optical microscope and uh, the original originator uh, is uh, you know uh, it is not easy to recognize because uh, the use of microscope it has been mentioned at different time series uh, the same about the same instrument it has been mentioned all right so it is very difficult to uh, recognize or trace back the first uh documentation of use of microscope the simplest scope which is there all right the optical microscope and it was nothing but a uh, next microscope or the first optical microscope and uh, the primary microscope it was believed to be made in uh, 1590s and uh, giovanni faber he coined the word microscope for uh, galileo's compound microscope galileo designed a compound microscope in 159 uh, in uh, 1625 and uh, that particular instrument was named microscope by giovanni faber and the optical microscope time and again it was referred to as the light microscope as a kind of microscope which involves the uh, visible light and a coordination of lenses uh, to enlarge the images of small samples all right so that was there now optical microscopes they are um elementary design of microscopes and they were designed around 1600 and elementary microscopes uh, elementary optical microscopes they can be very simple although there are countless multifaceted designs which intend to advance the resolution and uh, sample contrast now factually the optical microscopes they were very easy to improve improvise and uh, they were quite prevalent because they use visible light as a result the sample can be easily observed by the eye moreover this particular instrument could be carried anywhere and using just using the uh, you know the natural light which is available you could put this particular instrument into use so this was quite prevalent all over and uh, the image from optical microscope it can be taken by standard light sensitive cameras to produce a micrograph so micrograph is another term which can be uh, you know seen over here so micrograph it refers uh, literally transfers to uh, writing in small uh, ways so that is micrograph graph means to write and micro means small so anything which is uh, you know having a, a a size which is not easily identified by the naked eyes or the unaided eye so using an uh, instrument or using an apparatus which would be enlarging the uh, size of the image which is produced so that particular image which is produced is known as the micrograph all right 
So, uh, uh, you know, over here, I'm writing down uh, two terms. All right. Let's see if you can guess that particular thing. This is the first term. This is the second term, all right? So uh, let's see how you put your brains into work. What is photo, uh, microphotography and what is photomicrography? These two words, they are a bit tricky, all right? And uh, they might be a bit confusing also, but what is microphotography and uh, what is photomicrography? There is a minute difference. And if you observe these two terms, you can easily tell what is microphotography and what is photomicrography. Anybody? Let's just give it a try. We are not here to, uh, you know, uh, prove somebody right or wrong or, uh, you know, we are here to discuss things so that we can get an idea. Yeah. Microphotography is like very close up images using very uh, uh, high density lenses. Uh, like if there is a very, like you said that, you know, something that is not visible to the naked eye, but it needs yes. to be seen in a higher resolution with regards yes. to uh, if we take it into consideration, the evidence factor, and if that is one element that is crucial and needs to be seen in high resolution, then mm -hmm. microphotography comes into the picture. Okay. What would you say about uh, photomicrography? I'm not very sure about it, to be honest. All right. So the image, which is, uh, you know, uh, let's just clear this out. So uh, you are absolutely correct. So uh, basically, when you are photographing the image, which is there, all right, uh, uh, you know, the minute images which are there or uh, the minute objects which are there, when you are photographing those images, uh, you are photographing those objects, those micro objects, when you are directly photographing them, that would be... Um, micro photography all right so when we talk about photo micrography so uh, you know we are taking the photo of already enlarged image so that would be photo micrography so over here we would be using the term photo micrography all right we are photographing the uh, mine uh, you know uh, the minute object which was in uh, whose image was enlarged and uh, thereafter we are uh, seeing that enlarged image and we are uh, capturing that particular image so that would be called uh, photomicrography all right so that's there is it clear all right then so uh, let's uh, move ahead uh, so uh, we were talking about micrograph, right? Now, uh, initially, the images, they were taken by photographic film, but uh, contemporary involvements in the, uh, you know, charged couple devices, cameras, uh, it permits the storing of digital images. So these uh, digital cameras which are used, they can be used for taking the photograph of enhanced images. All right. Now, talking about the components of microscope. So all the contemporary optical microscopes, they are aimed for observing the samples by transmitted light and uh, have the similar uncomplicated apparatus of the light direction. And uh, here are, uh, you know, uh, the apparatus is uh, listed over here. The components of that apparatus are listed over here. So uh, these are listed in the order in which the light travels through them all right so first of all uh, the source of light uh, it bounces uh, it is uh, shown upon the uh, mirror and from the mirror either the mirror would be present or if the mirror is not there so the light would be directly passed on to the uh, diaphragm or uh, diaphragm and the condenser lens that is present right the lens which is present right below your uh, sample right where the sample 
sample is placed there is a lens which is present under it so that is called the diaphragm and the uh, condenser lens and thereafter the uh, you know light it travels uh, from the condenser lens to the object and from the object it passes to the objective and uh, you know those uh, three or four lenses which are present which you can rotate and uh, you know you can increase or decrease the focusing right so those are the objective lenses and from the objective lenses it passes on to the ocular lens so this is how the light travels all right in a microscope now here you can see the image of a microscope all right so uh, in addition to uh, these particular um, you know, components there are a vast majority of microscopes that have the same structural components that is the objective turret there is the stage to hold the sample and the focus wheel is there to operate the stage so over here you can see uh, you can focus on the diagram there is this um, you know u shaped uh, base which is there and on uh, above the base the first thing that you would be seeing is the mirror and uh, light it falls on the mirror and it is then uh, sent to the diaphragm and diaphragm it is uh, placed between the center of the stage and on the stage you place your sample and uh, there are these stage clips which uh, help you to fix the uh, you know uh, your sample onto the platform that is the stage now from this particular um, uh, you know stage or the diaphragm which is present over there so the light would be passing on to the objectives and from the objectives there is this fine focus and coarse focus so fine focus uh, it is uh, uh, you know it is there for uh, you know uh, getting the clearer picture whereas the coarse focus it focuses on to the uh, you know the uh, focal length is adjusted by the coarse focus whereas fine focus it uh, you know clears the picture the blurred picture which is there it clears the picture it sharpens the picture you know you might have used the instagram filters right so over there there is this option of sharpening the image so whatever boundaries are observed or whatever lines are observed there there are these two um, you know options which are there one is structure and one is sharpness right so in uh, structure uh, option when you increase the structure of the image so you can see that uh, you know you uh, get the uh, boundaries of that particular uh, uh, picture right so uh, you know you sort of try to convert it into a, a more uh, diagrammatic form rather than a, a normal picture right so that is the function of uh, structure option and over here the function of structure is performed by coarse focus and uh, the next is fine focus so fine focus is equivalent to the sharpness option over there the sharpness the lines which are already drawn right so it increases or it enhances the effect of those lines so that is what the fine focus does to your uh, object all right next is tube and in this tube there is uh, uh, there are, is this arrangement of mirrors which uh, you know focuses the light onto the eyepiece all right so that is there fine so this is how a, a microscope a typical microscope looks like and this is what is a optical microscope fine uh this is what a stereo microscope is now if you remove uh, you know if you just keep this particular uh, instrument up to the stage level only so it would become a uh, optical microscope simple optical microscope this is the simple uh, that would be a simple microscope but what is shown over here is the um, stereo microscope all right now i would be uh, focusing on the um different components function of different components of the microscope all right so first is the ocular or the eyepiece so the ocular or eyepiece it is a cylinder which comprehends of multiple lenses and uh, 
the purpose is to uh, coverage the image in the focus the top of the body tube has an eye piece which is inserted onto it and these eye pieces can be switched with numerous other eye pieces all right so over here uh, these are the types of microscopes this is the monocular microscope you might have encountered it uh, uh, you know uh, during your 11th and 12th standard even in your 10th standard the microscopes which are usually used by the school students those are the monocular uh, microscopes now later on these get uh, switched to binocular uh, my, uh, binocular eyepieces. Now, binocular eyepiece, you can see over here, the stereo microscope, which is shown over here. Um, just wait for, uh, yeah. This particular uh, picture, which is shown, this is, uh, this microscope is having the binocular vision. All right. Now, um, yeah, so these eyepieces, they can be switched with uh, numerous um, other eyepieces, which can be inserted with variable degrees of magnification. Now, uh, magnification values for the objectives, which are there. So the objective lens, which is there. So um, uh, the magnification values uh, of uh, those objective lenses, they can be uh, uh, changed. So it can be uh, 2x, 5x, 10x, 1.5x, and even 0.5x. All right. Now, uh, matching of the optical configuration of objective lens and eyepiece is done with few uh, high performance microscopes to give the optimum optical performance. And this happens ordinarily with the uh, apochromatic objectives. Fine. Now, next we talk about the stage. So, stage is a podium which or a platform which holds the specimen which is being viewed, uh, is known as a stage and uh, it is present beneath the objective and a hole is present in the center of the stage to let the light pass for illumination of specimen and arms are uh, usually present to uh, hold the slides in place now next we talk about the light source so various sources of light can be used and uh, at its simplest the daylight is directed via a mirror and most microscopes have their own uh, manageable source of light and uh, it is generally a halogen la lamp which is used all right next is the condenser so condenser it is a lens which is designed to focus the light from illumination source onto the sample and the condenser may also include other features such as the diaphragm or uh, the filters to manage the quality and intensity of illumination and for illumination methods such as the dark field phase contrast and differential interference contrast microscopy additional optical components can be added precisely aligned to the line path so uh, based upon these uh, preferences the stereo microscope can also be classified into uh, you know the microscopy can be classified into dark field microscopy or the phase contrast microscopy and even the differential interference contra uh, contrast microscopy all right now next is the frame so the complete um, uh, you see uh, the complete optical arrangement it is conventionally fixed to a rigid arm which is further joined to a strong u-shaped foot which provides the required rigidity and the viewing angle it can be adjusted to uh, using the arm angle the arm which is there the c-shaped structure which is connecting the stage to the uh, uh, you know lens arrangement that particular is known as arm and uh, by which you hold the microscope right so uh, the viewing angle it can be adjusted using this particular arm angle and the frame provides a mounting point for various microscope controls and uh, various panels for uh, focusing light uh, various panels for focusing the like uh, large kernel wheel to adjust coarse uh, focus and a smaller kernel wheel 
uh, is there to regulate the fine focus which is present on the frame now the controls for the lamp and the condenser they are some other features which are mounted onto the frame so uh, the onto the frame are the major uh, you know lenses and arrangements made so it forms the structural component of microscope now next we talk about the objective lenses so on a typical compound optical microscope there are selection of lenses which are available for different applications and uh, many different objective lenses with different properties and magnifications are available and typically there will be around three objective lenses there will be our low power lens, uh, lens for scanning the sample and uh, if you wish to uh, normally observe the sample there is this medium power lens and high power lens is there for detailed observations all right so if you uh, wish to uh, see what is there uh, in the uh, like you get a sample a soil sample is there right so you wish to observe what are the different um, uh, you know particles which are present over there you are not going into uh, you know a detail of flora and fauna which is present over there that would be the detailed observation right so for that detailed observation you would be requiring the high power lens if you wish to observe the soil sample whether it is containing some blood or not or whether it is free from some other impurity so you would be using a medium power lens that would be for normal observation then there is this uh, low power lens which is there for scanning the sample when you are arranging your sample so that you can focus on to any particular specific area of your interest you would be using a low power lens all right now the typical magnification of objective lens it depends on um, uh, it depends on to the intended application and the normal groups of lens magnification they may be uh, 4x 10x 20x for low magnification work and for high magnification work you would be requiring the power of 10x uh, 10x uh, 40x and uh, 100x all right now talking about magnification so the original power of com uh, uh, compound optical microscope is the outcome of powers of the ocular and the objective lens so when you multiply the uh power of the ocular uh, ocular and the objective lens you into 2 that is 80x your image would be multiplied uh, 80 times you would be seeing your uh, object of interest or you will be the sample which you will be seeing it would be 80 times multiplied to its and out of it we would be discussing about the you know, top four microscopes that is polarized light comparison stereoscopic and fluorescent microscopes all right so now we begin with the polarized light microscope so uh, uh, this particular microscope uh, it is a technique which involves a polarized light for illumination of sample while blocking the directly transmitted light with a polarizer which is oriented at 90 degrees to the illumination. Now to understand what uh, or how polarized light microscope works, so we need to understand what actually polarized light is. All right. So talking about the polarized light, uh, the normal light which you see, it is having uh, it uh, the waves they are oriented in 
two axes, right? It is uh, x-axis and y-axis, right? So these two uh, on these two axes, the light is uh, traveling. The normal light wave is traveling in that way only. You can see over here on the leftmost side where it is written the incident beam, which is the unpolarized light. So when you are passing this unpolarized light, which is uh, you know oriented in two directions, it is two dimensions, uh, x-axis and y-axis is there. So when you are passing this, uh, you know, uh, when you are passing this particular uh, light beam onto a polarizer filter, uh, a filter or a polarizer. So by the name only, it suggests that it would be polarizing the light. Either it would be, uh, you know, transferring it, uh, either it would be uh, allowing only the uh, x-axis or uh, uh, the light which is traveling in the x-axis or else it would be, uh, uh, you know, allowing the light which is passing onto the uh, y-axis through it. Right, so uh, they uh, these are the polarizers which are there. Uh, you know, uh, the light uh, you might have heard about um, when you are purchasing your uh, shades or your goggles, I may say. So, those shades, uh, there are two types of it one is the normal ones, which are uh, you know not uh, highly valued, they are quite um, cheap in price so those uh, uh, you know uh, eye glasses they uh, or the eye pieces they would not be uh, uh, you know contain uh, they would not be uh, having the polarizers in them so when you would be using uh, those uh, shades those normal uh, glasses which you would be putting on so you when you uh, would be looking at at the night time when you'll be looking at the beam of light which is coming from the uh, you know uh, let's say vehicles so at night time uh, the light which is polarizers you would be seeing that a light uh, beam coming out from the headlight it is uh, you know more beam oriented so uh, next time you can just give it a try and uh, you'd be able to observe the difference between that right uh, in one you would be seeing the light it would be uh, you know scattered much like when you see look at the sun so the light is quite scattered right but when you will be putting on those polarized shades so you would be able to see that the light it is not scattered instead it is coming in form of a beam rather it is for, uh, coming in form of a beam so over there the polarizers they uh, you know the function of polarizers was put into use all right so they only allowed the uh, you know they only allowed uh, the light of a particular uh, which was oriented in a particular direction either in x direction or in y direction to only pass through the uh, you know glass piece uh, to reach to your eye all right so that is the same thing which is happening over here all right uh, uh, just give me a second Yeah. So uh, talk, uh, coming back to the polarized light microscope. So uh, this um, polarized light microscopy, it is uh, the technique which is involving the use of polarized light for illumination of uh, illumination of the sample while blocking the directly transmitted light with the polarized uh, polarizer, which is oriented at 90 degrees. All right.
Now, uh, all right. So uh, it is designed to observe the specimens which are uh, visibly, uh, which are visible primarily due to their optically anisotropic character. That is uh, by refinement. You might have heard uh, about uh, the Kirel structures which are there in your uh, chemistry uh, class in your 12th uh, standard. You might have heard about the uh, this particular term that is uh, polarization. And apart from that, you might have heard about the isomers. You might have heard about the chirality of a compound, chirality of a structure. Is that particular thing clear to you? Chiral compounds. Do you know about this concept? No, ma'am. All right. So uh, talking about uh, chirality of any particular compound, when, uh, you know, in chemistry, when we study the structures of uh, any uh, compound, so uh, they are defined according to their, uh, you know, way of scattering the light. You might have heard, uh, you uh, people might have suffered from common cold. So there are two types of medicines which are present. One is citrazine and one is levocitrazine. All right. So uh, have you heard about uh, these two drugs? Yes, Citra Citrazine and levocitrazine. These are the two types of drugs which are given. Citrazine is, uh, you know, one, uh, the difference between these two structures is both are citrazine, but one would be, con uh, you know, one would be diverting the light to towards the right side and another would be diverting the li right, light towards the left side. So levocitrazine, it is diverting the uh, light towards the right side. The chirality of the compound is... Uh, a property of uh, any particular, um, uh, you know, structure of a compound, which would be uh, showing the optical properties. So it would be optical properties means it is uh, it has got something uh, to do with the light, right? So uh, to understand it in a layman term, so uh, the levo products they have, uh, uh, you know, they. Uh, bounce the light in the clock uh, uh, in the uh, towards the right direction the levo compounds and uh, opposite to them are the dextro compounds all right so these are the two basic uh, compounds right so uh, as we were talking about uh, the polarized light microscope so uh, it this particular uh, instrument it is designed to observe the specimens which are visible primarily because of their optically and isotropic character all right so these compounds must have uh, you know uh, these compounds must have the chirality in them I will type the word over here in the message section. You can see. And the reason behind chirality is chiral carbon, which is there. So if you have a personal interest in this, you can look up for these two terms. It is quite simple. You know, it is quite basic property of any particular compound. All right. Now, coming back to the topic. So any uh, compound which is optically active, that is when uh, light would be passed through it, light would be either, uh, you know, uh, it would be showing its presence uh, uh, by either diverting the light towards the right hand side or to the left hand side. Right. So that would be a chiral compound. So uh, those compounds would be, uh, you know, showing their presence in the uh, polarized light microscope. So uh, the microscope, it must be equipped with both a polarizer and uh, positioned the uh, positioned uh, this particular pol uh, polarizer, it should be positioned in the light path somewhere be uh, before the specimen. So between the uh, light source and the sample, the polarizer must be present. All right. And then analyzer, which is a second polarizer, it should be placed in an optical pathway between the objective uh, rear aperture and the observation tubes or the camera port, which is there or simply an eyepiece. 
all right now uh, when the electric field vectors of light they are restricted to a single uh, plane by filtration then the light is said to be polarized and uh, with respect to the direction of propagation of the waves so the wave would be propagating in a similar uh, same direction only you all know about the concept of x axis and y axis right you might be knowing about that right yes ma'am all right so over here in this particular figure also you can see that the incident light it is unpolarized that is the light wave it is uh, you know uh, traveling in or propagating in all the directions or all the planes right but when it is passing through polarizer 1 it uh, only those uh, light waves which are uh, you know it would be um, converting the light wave in, uh, to propagate into a particular uh, plane only so over here you can see that this polarizer 1 which is the vertical polarizer it would only be transmitting the light which would be falling into the y axis only the light waves which are traveling in y axis only would be uh, you know passing through these uh, particular uh, you know filter or the polarizer all right so it works as a converter for this particular unpolarized light all right now uh, the next polarizer which is there it is placed at the uh, ips so somewhere between the ips and the objective it is there so it would be converting this particular x uh, it uh, this particular y axis uh, light wave into x axis light wave all right and then it would be reaching to your eyes fine now uh, the analyzer which is there that is the upper polarizer it is a polarizing prism which is located above the microscope stage and uh, it is present between the lens and the eyepiece this restricts the transmission of light vibrating in the uh, oh, it restricts the transmission of light vibrating perpendicular to the polarizer now the analyzer it can be slipped in or out of the light path or rotated for partly uh, partially uh, closed polarized light a uh, partially crossed polarized light and uh, the light which is passing through the polarizer will not pass uh, through the analyzer unless the vibration direction of the light is changed between the two prisms all right and uh, then uh, the polarizer uh, the lower polarizer which is there so a polarizing prism it is located beneath the it is located beneath the microscope stage which is between the light source and the object of study now this restricts the transmission of light to that vibrating in only one direction so let us consider uh, the light which is propagating in the uh, y axis so we can consider it to be north and south direction so uh, it would be uh, this particular lower polarizer it would be restricting the transmission of light to uh, you know only the north only the light uh, light which would be passing in north side uh, north south direction would be passed through it now some microscopes they have a different orientation direction so in effect uh, it uh, plane polarizes the incident light beam all right now uh, when we talk about the uses of the um polarized microscopy so it is uh, used for the determination of refractive index and it provides the data so that data provides an information that helps to identify the uh, minerals which are present in a soil sample or uh, uh, the identity of man made uh, fiber all right just a second all right yeah so that is the uh, you know application of polarized microscopy now i give you a case and from that you have to pick up the evidences all right so for example you reached a crime scene and over there in that particular crime scene you got to know that uh, the police or the investigating officer had collected the uh, a few samples so over there there was this soil sample 
there was this uh, blood sample and then there was uh, uh, you know uh, certain fiber structures were there and the case was of um, kidnapping all right so uh, you know based on all these evidences also there was hair which was present and apart from that there were certain tool marks which were there and uh, uh, you know footprints were also there now uh, up from all these evidences from all these list of evidences firstly choose uh, what are the biological evidences can you list the biological evidences out of all evidences hair blood yeah please write it down hair soil blood all right what else what else i mentioned about fiber also right yeah all right so um, over here you need to take care that what uh, has been asked in the report so soil sample it is usually sent to the chemistry section for its analysis to check the chemical constituents or else it is sent to the physics uh, division to check the physical properties of that particular soil now until and unless it has been asked from you that you need to check the flora and fauna which is present inside that particular soil sample so until and unless that is asked to you you will not be including the soil uh, as a biological evidence all right but for a safe site we can uh, you know include soil now over here Uh, out of all these listed evidences what all evidences are you going to subject uh, under this particular um, polarized light microscope so what all objects would be uh, you be subjecting to uh, for analysis under polarized light microscope we talked about fibers right hair fiber all right actually we will not be uh, you know subjecting fiber and soil absolutely correct we will not be subjecting hair uh, under for examination under polarized light microscopy all right uh, because in uh, polarized light microscopy which you will be later on seeing in a video also so in polarized light microscopy what you see is the structure of that particular uh, sample all right in hair we uh, uh, in hair sample we know that uh, you know by looking at the texture of the hair we, uh, when we subject it to a uh, normal stereo microscope uh, itself you can get to uh, know the structure of that particular hair sample whether it belongs to an animal or else it is a uh, human hair all right yeah hair is observed under stereo microscope all right it can easily be examined the structure can easily be examined under stereo microscope all right uh, metal is uh, i actually don't know the name lizzy shall i call you lizzy so lizzy metal is not a biological uh, uh, you know evidence so we are not taking it into account right here oh, okay, so otherwise yeah otherwise uh, metal can also be examined under uh, the polarized uh, microscope to uh, check the structure of that particular metal all right now uh, talking about fiber and soil so to see their structure and uh, uh you know analyze what that particular uh, you know fiber is made up of and uh, what is the structure of that uh, you know sometimes there is a confusion between uh, the fur and wool all right so uh, to check the structure we would be uh, you know subjecting uh, that particular fiber under a polarized light microscope and uh, in soil samples uh, Uh, you know again that would be going to the chemistry division so they would be checking the structure of the soil particles
to in order to you know uh, get to know what type of soil uh, it might be all right along with the other properties like uh, water retaining property and density gradient method those are separate methods but uh, you know uh, fiber and soil they can be examined under polarized light microscope fine now um it uh, helps to identify the minerals which are present in the soil sample and uh, identifying the man made uh, fiber uh, distinguishing the natural fiber and man made fiber we would be requiring the polarized light microscopy or polarized microscopy fine now next we uh, move on to the comparison microscope now this is simply when two microscopes they are uh, two uh, simple stereo microscopes when they are put together and uh, their results are analyzed side by side so that becomes the com uh, comparison microscope the name it, from the name itself it is quite clear fine so a comparison microscope it is a tool which is used to examine the uh, objects uh, simultaneously all right it uh, comprises of two microscopes which are linked by an optical bridge and it results this is how a uh, optical uh, this is how a comparison microscope looks like and uh, based upon its functioning to understand the functioning so this is the uh, you know block diagram a uh, diagrammatic representation over here you can see that there are two separate uh, microscopes which are present which are connected by a rod like structure at the top right so uh, this particular bridge is called optic optical bridge and it, uh, these two microscopes when they are linked by the optical bridge it results in a split view window which allows to separate objects and uh, which are ob uh, observed at the same time that is consecutively uh, when they are examined simultaneously when they are examined so uh, you can see over here you can see a circular diagram in which you can see the samples which are present and uh, this is how the uh, samples they look like when you compare them using a comparison microscope the images of the objects they are present side by side so it provides you an uh, vision that uh, how you uh, you know it uh, makes the thing easier for you to analyze all right and uh, it is quite useful in tool mark analysis but apart from that if you are observing the pollen grain structure for example so it would be quite difficult for you to separately examine those two samples when uh, you know the main advantage of observing them side by side is that you can uh, uh, you know put those two uh, samples in a single frame and then you can compare them all right so that would be uh, sparing you from the tedious task of observing those two uh, objects uh, separately and thereafter comparing them comparing those structures all right or uh, else even the soil samples also all right even uh, when diatoms are observed so the diatoms which are present inside uh, which were collected from the human or uh, from the bone of a person and uh, those diatoms which were uh, you know obtained from the uh, uh, you know surrounding where he uh, where the person um, uh, you know drowned so at the drowning site the item atoms which were obtained from the water body from uh, those spe uh, that specimen apart from that the specimen which is collected uh, or which is prepared after crushing the bones and uh, there after collecting the diatom sample so those two samples they can be compared side by side so you can match whether the diatoms which were present they are uh, you know uh, similar or not you can do the task separately also but it would be much more convenient when you'd be using a comparison microscope all right so uh, you know viewing this particular result in a split view window uh, it allows uh, two separate images or objects to be viewed consecutively and this prevents the viewer having to depend on the memory while associating two objects under the conventional microscope and the modern apparatus has various optical mechanical and electronic refinements including fiber optic illumination video capabilities and even digital imaging a camera can be attached to the uh, you know eyepiece and uh, 
automatic exposure for conventional photography also can be there now it can be used for comparison of hair and fiber of different origins or of same origin to uh, ascertain whether they have different origin or same origin uh, this uh, microscope can be put to use for comparing hair samples fibers or uh, even the soil samples also and even the water sample which is there so to compare any object side by side you can put um, uh, comparison microscope to use all right now next is the stereo microscope so this is a picture of typical stereo microscope so uh, it is an optical microscope variant which is designed for low magnification observation of a sample typically it uses the light reflected from the surface of an object rather than the transmitted light uh, through it when uh, you know in the other microscopes the light would be transmitted through the specimen rather than that uh, you know uh, the light which is reflected from the surface of an object uh, that would be uh, you know measured by this particular microscope now this instrument it uses two separate optical paths uh, with two objectives and eye pieces to provide a slightly different viewing angles to the left and the right eye and this arrangement it produces a 3d visualization of a sample which is being examined now the reflected light it illuminates rather than transmitted illumination all right so the sample uh, it is uh, you know a sample is placed onto the platform which is present below right so now the light would be falling on the top of it and that particular light would be reflecting back again to the objective lens and hence the image would be produced in other uh, microscopes in other typical uh, you know optical microscopes which are there the simple microscopes which are being used so in those microscopes uh, the light which is there it is transmitted through the sample over here in stereo microscope the light would be uh, reflected from the sample it would not be transmitted and then received by the lens objective lens all right so this arrangement it produces a 3d visualization of the sample now talking about the compound light microscope so uh, in that the transmitted illumination takes place the uh, you know microscope that was uh, you know uh, Uh, the microscopes which you generally use in laboratories those are compound light microscopes all right so uh, light which is reflected from the surface of an object rather than the light transmitted through an object is uh, being utilized over here and the use of reflected light from the object it allows the examination of specimens that would be too thick or otherwise which are opaque for compound microscopy all right now uh, the stereo microscope it overlaps the macro photography for recording and examination of solid samples which uh, have the complex surface topography for example there is this wooden block and over that wooden block you have to visualize something uh, which is uh, which is present uh, you know which uh, you know it offers uh, the wooden block would be offering a uh, opaque surface light cannot transmit through the wooden block right so rather we would be using stereo microscope so the light would be falling onto that particular microscope uh, light would be falling onto that particular sample and then it would be getting reflected to the uh, uh, lenses to the objective lens and then to the eyepiece so uh, then a image would be produced right so it is a solution for those uh, samples which are opaque in nature and through which the transmitted light cannot pass all right and um, this stereo microscope it is actually two monocular uh, compound microscopes which are properly spaced and then aligned to present a three dimensional image of a specimen to the viewer and uh, the viewer he looks through the uh, through both the eye pieces at the same time now talking about the forensic application we can analyze any uh, uh, you know for the sake of analysis of any biological evidence which uh, is either itself opaque in nature or else uh, it is present over some opaque surface 
So for that, stereo microscopy can be put to use. All right. Now next we come on to the uh, fluorescent microscope. All right. Yesterday we discussed about the fluorescence, right? The fluorescence phenomena and the phosphorescence phenomena, right? So over here, uh, the fluorescence phenomena is uh, explained to you in a better way. So when the sample it is excited using a light wave of a particular frequency or a particular wavelength. So when the so, uh, when the sample surface is radiated with that particular light uh, coming from the light source, so the electrons which are present in the atoms, so they would be uh, transferring when uh, they would uh, be receiving the uh, energy uh, which would be meeting the threshold energy of. Um, those particular when the threshold frequency light wave would be falling onto that those particular atoms the electrons would be crossing their uh, threshold uh, after receiving that light wave they would be crossing their threshold energy barrier and then they would be transmitting from their ground state which is the lowermost state so they would be transmitting from the ground state to the excited state the ground state is the uh, you know uh, it is the uh, stable state whereas the excited state is the unstable state, right? So uh, for, uh, now it has reached to the excited state. Now it cannot maintain uh, uh, or it cannot, uh, you know, uh, manage to remain in the excited state for a longer period of time. Uh, so as soon as it loses its energy, and this energy would be lost in form of the light waves. So as soon as it loses its energy, it again falls back to the ground state. That is the stable state, right? So this energy, which is lost in form of light, this would be the fluorescence nature, all right? So a fluorescence microscope, it is an optical microscope which uses uh, fluorescence and phosphorescence instead of or in addition to the reflection and absorption to study the properties of organic and inorganic substances. The fluorescence microscope, it refers to any microscope which uses the fluorescence to generate an image. And the phenomena of fluorescence is uh, explained to you via this particular diagram. All right. Now, uh, when certain compounds, they are illuminated with high energy light, then they emit light of a different or lower frequency. And this is known, this particular effect, it is known as fluorescence and often specimens they show their own characteristic autofluorescence image and based on their chemical makeup they are giving this particular fluorescence so specimens uh, which are usually stained with fluorochromes they usually give uh, this type of energy all right now this is the setup or the diagrammatic representation of working of a fluorescent microscope all right so over here, you can see that uh, from the mercury arc lamp, the uh, light is passing onto the excitation filter. And from that, the blue light is transferred to the, uh, you know, splitter, which is there. That is the chromatic beam splitter from left to right, if you'd observe the path of light, right? So uh, the blue and red light would be passing from the uh, mercury arc lamp they would be falling onto the excitation filter and only the blue and red light would be allowed to pass through it and they would be falling onto a, a you know oblique line which is there right so that is called chromatic beam, uh, beam splitter and this beam splitter it would be allowing the blue light uh, uh, and uh, red light to uh, you know perpendicularly fall onto the specimen which is lying flat on the bottom and um, this specimen would be, uh, you know, transmitting the, uh, it would be, uh, uh, you know, transmitting out the light. And this light, that would be the blue light, which is there, it would be passing on to the barrier filter, which is there present right before the eyepiece. And this barrier filter would be, uh, you know, allowing the light of a particular wavelength, for example, blue light over here. It would be received by the barrier filter and the uh, rest of the light which is there which is emitted by the specimen it would be uh, crossing the barrier filter and it would be reaching to the eyepiece and thereafter uh, it would be producing for example the green fluorescence 
and hence you'd be seeing those particular uh, structures or the image uh, uh, the image of the specimen uh, having a green fluorescence the example is shown to you over here in this particular picture you can see the diagram of sperms which is there on to your left hand side on to your right hand side it is the chromatin structure which is there all right so uh, the specimen it is exposed to uv light or violet light or blue light and uh, it shows a bright image of the object which is resulting from the fluorescent light which is emitted by the specimen and here it would be called the fluorophores so uh, different fluorescent lights they can be used to stain different structures or chemical compounds and uh, examples of commonly used fluoros uh, fluorophores are the fluorocene or rhodamine dye rhodamine dye is used for staining the protein structures all right and an ideal fluorescent image shows only the structure of interest that was labeled with fluorescent dye on your uh, leftmost side it is the um, uh, uh, these are the sperms that you are seeing and on to your rightmost side you are seeing the protein structures all right so it has got various uses in uh, forensic science so basically in biochemistry to analyze the structure of different proteins so it is used so to study the membrane dynamics that is for example endocytosis the receptor bindings etc they can be seen using uh, this particular microscope so to study the membrane dynamics to measure the concentration of calcium ions to see the uh, change in ph or uh, the protein interactions to study the protein interaction it can be used to determine the localization of specific or multiple proteins this particular uh, microscope can be used to uh, determine the shape of organs cells intracellular structures also it can be seen using uh, these particular uh, microscopes and it can also be used to examine the dynamics of protein to study the protein interaction or uh, conformation of protein whether it is a positive or negative protein and uh, examining the ion concentration etc it is uh, these are the uses or some of the uses of um, you know uh, this fluorescent microscope all right now when i am talking about protein structures so Uh, you know basically every uh, tissue would be containing protein and if there is uh, some sort of irregularity which is observed in the tissue so that would be uh, visualized or that can be visualized those uh, proteinaceous structures when we go beyond the cellular level when we go uh, down to the protein level or to the atomic level when we go down to that level we can uh, very well observe those differences using this particular microscope fine so with this we uh, finish with the microscopy section all right now tomorrow we will be starting with spectrometry and uh, if you have any doubts you can ask it magnification of comparison microscope yes uh, it is asked um centi i hope uh, you asked about hair in stereo microscope stereo uh, it can be visualized uh, using the stereo microscope the outer structure would be visualized using the stereo microscope uh, whereas you can also use the um, you know uh, compound light microscope to visualize the hair sample second thing is the magnification of comparison microscope so uh, the magnification it can uh, go uh, to the level of you know thousand times it can magnify the image provided you use uh, the combination of 10x and 100x 10x at the eyepiece and 100x at the uh, low uh, objective lens all right so that can be there and as low as 25 uh, times you can multiply the image so that can be there all right so it uh, totally depends upon the uh, you know um, it totally depends upon what type of lenses you are uh, fitting in onto your eyepiece and to your objective lens all right so based upon that you can uh, attain the desired magnification and it can go up to uh, uh, you know 1000 times you can magnify the image
All right. Is there any other question? All right, then. I hope everything is clear to you. What all has been said? Yes, yes. ma'am. All right. All right, then. I'll call for the day now. So tomorrow, uh, hopefully, we do not uh, meet any sort of, uh, you know, this was a misfortunate event that... Uh,